So why do I, just curiosity, why do I need glasses and you don't? Because with with me lasering him and him being so wiggly, if the laser pops off oh, and hits gotcha. you in the makes, eyeball, it's going to be a problem. That makes sense. So, See yeah. everybody. Sorry. <laughs> So what we, what we did for his session today, we already did his acupuncture um, and we do for him a type of acupuncture that we call aquapuncture. So aquapuncture is the application of an injectable liquid. It can be a variety of different things. In China, they'll use herbal teas um, or plant extracts. Technically, you can use vaccines as a part of injectable acupuncture. I use vitamin B12, but you can also use saline, and there are some aquapunctures where you actually use the animal's own blood. You can draw their own blood wow. and then inject it in the different acupuncture points. What's the, um, if I ask, what's the, uh, I mean, obviously I know what the benefits of, of uh, B12 over saline, but is that basically the benefits that the vitamins content and helps with? Not necessarily, so it's not necessarily the vitamin content, although I specifically use B12 because a lot of the animals that I am working with are chronically old and debilitated, so they're not absorbing B12 very well. Okay. So I do that, first of all, as a, as a vitamin replacement for them um, it's a fairly safe thing to use because it's a water soluble vitamin so it runs a very low risk that we're gonna accidentally OD them okay. because even if we wind up using more than we initially intended or more than they need their body's just gonna kick it straight out of their kidneys and and we don't necessarily have to worry about that um, but in Chinese medicine vitamin B12 is slightly warming so it actually brings energy to oh, okay. the acupuncture points that makes sense so it actually does kind of help warm things up a little bit and it's not so warming that if you have an animal that has a, a what would be called a hot disease in Chinese medicine um, it doesn't make that disease more dangerous um, so it's not something that we necessarily have to worry about and vitamin B12 can also be very helpful with myofascial pain so doing vitamin B12 injections for like myofascial pain can be very, very helpful. And again, since I'm usually working with more chronically debilitated animals, a lot of times they do have myofascial issues and- I don't know if I'm helping, I'm listening. No, it's okay, it's okay. I'm, um, I'm squirming on you, I don't wanna make sure it's not my fault. No, he's good. Um, but it can, it can kind of help with some of that pain management as well. So I use it for a variety of different reasons, both its safety aspect and kind of the, the secondary that positive sense, benefits yeah. of it. And again, then, yeah, you do, you do get the secondary benefits of the B12 energy and everything else, right? Yep, because, absolutely. Yeah, I'm a big, so, fan, yeah, I'm a so, big fan of B12. So then what we're doing now is what's referred to as um, low-level light therapy. Okay. Some people call it cold laser. There are a ton of different names for it. Um, but this is a class 3B laser, and we're doing this because laser can, first of all, help with pain management. And even though we don't necessarily think that his condition is particularly uncomfortable, as we do start restoring some of that nerve functionality because of the contraction of his of his um, muscles and his tendons, that is gonna be stiff, that is gonna be sore, so we know that eventually this might start to become uncomfortable as we restore some of that neurologic function. That makes sense, but yeah. also, laser can be very neuroregenerative, so it can actually help nerves kind of regenerate and reduce inflammation, and since this was an injury that was, or this is a, um, a condition that was brought on by an injury, even though it's an old injury, there's chronic inflammation in there that we, that we want to try to help reduce so that way hopefully the nerves can start having a little bit more freedom of movement and starting to get more um, more functionality and blood flow to them. Okay, now random, quick random question now that you mentioned uh, inflammation. Is there any supplements I could be giving? I mean, obviously, you know, we did the CBD and that's anti-inflammatory, but um, is there any other supplements that I could be giving them on a regular basis that might actually help with the internal inflammation? Right now, I would stick with just doing um, what you're currently doing. Okay. Um, technically, because we are in the state of Maryland as a veterinarian, I cannot make recommendations gotcha. for gotcha. CBD. Um, but as a private citizen, you're welcome to give your dog whatever you want to. Um, but at, at this point in time, I mean, turmeric, any of them? Or? Turmeric is going to be really hot. Okay. And since he's a he's a growing boy and he he's moving a lot it's not necessarily a bad one but i just i worry that it's going to create a lot of heat in his body okay um oat is actually very neuroregenerative oats. so like just just oats. like oats and oatmeal would certainly okay. be something that we could that we could add in for him okay um that would honestly probably be the first thing that i would want to you know kind of add in and and kind of see what we get but we do have to be careful with herbal supplements with puppies just like we have to be careful with herbal supplements with um human children okay. because you know when we're growing these things can absolutely affect um how we potentially grow and not a lot of stuff has been tested in growing animals to know whether or not we're going to have right. any kind of influences on growth plates and stuff like that 
So I try to be very gentle and oats is a part of what is called the grass family, G-R-A-S, which is generally regarded as safe. Okay. So it's usually things that are like food grade and you can, you know, we don't have, you would have to consume a ridiculous quantity of it before it really became a problem. Stomach would turn first. Yeah, so, first. so yeah. So yeah, oats, oats would certainly be something that, that could be very, very helpful for him. How about um, mushrooms? Um, the microdosing. Um, I just about the connection with Chinese medicine too. <laughs> I can't think of any specific benefits that mushrooms are going to have, okay. but I love mushrooms. Mushrooms are absolutely wonderful. They're a really lovely source of kind of a, a plant protein. You're also getting kind of that umami flavor, which oftentimes will help make other herbs more palatable. And mushrooms just in general, they're anti-cancer. They're right. very, very supportive of a lot of different things. Um, so I would be very, very okay with him getting mushrooms, but I would not necessarily expect that like, oh yes, if you start mushrooms, this, that, and the other is going to definitely right, right. happen. Um, the other supplement that you could certainly consider giving him would be astragalus. Astragalus, astragalus is a, it's a Chinese root, um, and astragalus, a lot of people know astragalus because especially in more chronic situations, um, it, it winds up being something like, oh, I'm getting older, I should start taking astragalus because it helps to boost your energy. Like well. Maybe. Mm -hmm. it's coming in that. Mm -hmm. Sorry. So with astragalus, it is what's called the male adaptogen. So adaptogens are herbs that they, they bring you back into homeostasis. If you have an excessive condition, it's going to bring it down. If you have a deficient condition, it's going to bring it up. Um, astragalus is very, very good for chronic issues. But because it is also an energy booster, while he doesn't necessarily need, he's not lethargic. So we're he's not definitely not lethargic. Yeah, we're not trying to bring his energy up from that perspective, but we are trying to get more energy flowing through his body to get back into the area that is no longer sensing energy. So a stragglist could be very helpful to kind of like get his energy back. His in. knees are coming down right now. That's amazing. They're, wor they're working on it. That's amazing. It. I know. I know. Because you know how he's locked all the mm -hmm. way up. Nope, I did a couple little stretches with him before I did his acupuncture, but some of the acupuncture that I did... All right, buddy, your laser's all done. Bobby, you can take your glasses off. Um, oh, wow. But <laughs> I know, it's, it's very weird. Um, but some of the acupuncture that I did, there's actually a point that's called Leo Feng, and you only do this in animals that don't really have sensation because it's a super sensitive point. Oh, between but the But there toes. are three of them that are up in between the toes, and it is very specifically, the only indication for it is paralysis and paresis. Okay. But it's a very powerful point. And then the other one is bladder 62, which is a little point that sits right here that helps with coordinating hind limb steps. So we're, okay. we're focusing a lot of acupuncture points with trying to start with just movement and activation of the hind legs. Gotcha. So what we're going to be doing for him as far as like his little, his little stretches and his little movements, because you're right, he's, he's a little frog boy right now. So we're kind of in this little froggy position. But they're not all the way tight up top. No, like they're not, they're not super tight anymore. We're starting to get him down a little bit more, which is absolutely lovely. So one of our little exercises, and I'm going to have you hold his front okay. end so that I can kind of work his back end a little bit more. Right. But Would this be better if I had somebody helping me doing I that? I mean, if you had somebody helping, yes, but I think that he probably sits still for you more than he sits still for me, so you may be able to do this one hand. Do you try to put a beggar on this boy? <laughs> yeah, no, no, not quite. So, but our first goal is going to be very gently just, just trying to get him into a more normal dog position. Okay. And I don't care if his knees are tucked, like right now they're tucked all the way mm -hmm. up against his body versus down like this. Okay. But once we get them into normal position, doing this is going to be helping with the range of motion within his hips and starting to activate and move some of those muscles and starting to stretch them into what would eventually become normal movement, either going from a sit up into a stand or through walking. So we want to bring those little leggies in and we want to do stretches and you can either do stretches like right now I'm doing them concurrently. So I'm doing both legs in the same mm -hmm. way or you can alternate because that's how his legs would wind up eventually okay. moving. So this is gonna be sitting, standing, pooping, weird. peeing. This is gonna be walking. Okay. But that's that's gonna be 100% helpful. We're also gonna to wanna to kind of get things down into the extended position and hold, and that's gonna to start to help to stretch the muscles. So a brief stretch is going to help with just loosening things up a little bit and 
an extended stretch is going to help with softening the tendons. Okay. So we don't want to be pulling a whole lot. We just want to take it to tension and then just hold for about 60 seconds. It's like static and, then, and ballistic yep, stretch. Mm -hmm. like and then like bring it back to normal and then maybe do one more stretch like that and do that one or two times a day. Okay. Okay. So the other thing that we want to do while we've got him kind of in this normal position is try to start to get the rest of the limb into its normal position. Okay. Remember last week we couldn't do this. Yeah, last, last week even though he was, yeah, yeah, his paws were out. Yep. Yep. So I'm going to see if I can Both. get something. This one's a little bit more twisted and torqued, but okay. if we can start just getting him into this position, boy, that is a very close, I mean, his little feet are sticking out farther than they should, but that is a very close normal dog sit. It's better than it was, yeah. It's significantly better than it was last week. Last week we couldn't even do this. So getting him here, holding for a short period of time, about 60 seconds. Okay. And if if we have a non-slip, this is too squishy, mm -hmm. that's too slippery, but if we have a non-slip surface that is like just, just flat, Okay. letting him, putting him in this position and letting him sit like that on his own and trying to hold, yes! <laughs> here we go, we're gonna move him and we're gonna move the squishy and see if we can get him to just sit and hold this on his own. Because if his body can hold that tension and keep him in that position, that would be amazing. <laughs> okay. There we go. A little bit of food, buddy. All right, are we still in the camera? We are. Okay, here, you go ahead and hold front end. Okay, buddy, I know it's a food tray. Don't worry, <laughs> we're not eating you. Daddy and I have already had lunch. Okay, so we're going to try and... Whoop! Oh, where are you going, big guy? Look at that, look at that! <laughs> Look at you sitting, bud. All right, so all I'm doing is I'm barely holding his toesies. I'm not, yeah, I'm barely touching. Wow. Okay. So, yeah, just putting his body in normal positions okay. or as close to normal as we can is going to help with neural processing because it's just we're putting his neurologic system where it should be and getting his body to go, oh, this is, this is where I should be. Okay. And it's going to help to create a little bit of balance. It's also going to help create a little bit of strength. It's going to start to stretch those joint capsules a little bit to try and get his body back into a more normal position. And that's kind of what we really need to do because until we can get his legs to be in a semi-normal position, we're not going to be able to start with like walking and moving other than in like a, a cart or a wheelchair because he's not going to, his, even if we could get his legs straight, if they're sticking straight out, right. we're, we're not going to get anything. So starting to work on just getting him into normal doggy positions. And then I'm gonna very gently hold there and try to lift him up. I know I'm trying to not pinch anything. I know things don't stretch very far, but now he's actually at full extension for both of his legs. So it's not very much because he still has a lot okay, of contractual yeah. bend in his, in his knees and his hips, but we're up a little and we're down a little. Now we're up a tiny bit. Now we're down a tiny bit. All right, I'm gonna very gently let go and just see. I'm gonna shift his, I'm gonna shift his back a tiny bit over. There yeah, we go. He's definitely. Oh my God, that's so much better. I know it's slipping know it's right. out, but he's not putting a lot of weight and pressure on it right now. He's because he's used to just lifting his body up to go. Wow. But that's look so at smart, how much more guy. he's. Yeah, look at how much more those those legs are just like. Until he activates his muscles trying to move forward, those little kneesies are coming down a little bit more. So continue to work and stretch those. And they feel much more pliable right mm -hmm. now too. Excellent. And that's some of that is the laser. Some of that is some of the, the work and, and manipulations I was doing on his joints. And some of that's the acupuncture just helping in the B12 to help soften that myofascia. Perfect. You did pretty good today, bud. You did amazing. <laughs> Look at you little dancing He loves feet. the plank. <laughs> That's how he eats. Yum. His whole back ends up off the ground when he eats. <laughs> so sweet. There you go. That's nice and straight. Now you twist it again. Get nice and straight for that. Hi, honey. He is all set for today. Perfect. Thank you, doctor. You are welcome, dear.